children. Hi, Mr. Root. Gosh, what happened to your ankle? I sprained it yesterday. I was trimming bushes and I fell off my ladder. Ho oh, ho, you sure trim them into cool looking shapes. I didn't do that. I stopped trimming when I hurt my ankle. Someone else must have come during the night and trimmed the bushes into these fancy shapes. But I don't know who. You mean you don't have any idea who did it? No, but I sure do appreciate the help. Whoever it was, I think that means we have a mystery to solve. Busy Town Action Bug News! Goldbug here, reporting live for Busy Town Action News. Uncle, these trimmed bushes are amazing. Do you have any idea who the creative clipper is behind all this? No, that's the mystery, Goldbug. A mystery that we're going to solve by finding out who did it. Yay! Ready for it? Here it goes! Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, Say how? Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Everybody! Who, what, when, where, why, how? Solve a mystery! Another baffling busy town mystery. Who is the mystery trimmer? Stay tuned for exciting news updates. I'm Goldbug, and that's the heads up in Busy Town. Where do we begin, Huckle? Well, first, we need to look carefully at these bushes for clues. <laughs> A bush that looks like me! <laughs> Isn't that remarkable? Wow! That bush does look just like Dr. Lion. Cool! Remarkable! Wow. And that one over there looks like Rudolph von Flugel. <laughs> and there's Pig Will's bush. Or is it Pig Won't? It looks like me! No, it doesn't, Pig Will. It looks like me! I'm sure it's me. And I'm sure it's me! Well, that's our first clue. The trimmer must be someone who knows exactly what everyone in Busy Town looks like. That's for sure. Look at this. The trimmer even knows what they look like from behind. <laughs> and do you notice that none of the head bushes are wearing hats? Aha! That means the mystery trimmer doesn't like hats. Hmm. Maybe. Or maybe the trimmer really likes hair and doesn't want to cover it up with hats. Hey, Mr. Root's going to trim a bush. Let's go watch. Those are pretty big scissors, Mr. Root. These aren't scissors, Sally. These are called clippers. I'm going to try to trim this bush into a nice shape, too. 
Now, who should it be? I think a pig will bush would be best. No way! It should be a pig won't bush. Do me! No, me! Should I be smiling? Ah! Or serious? Actually, I think I'll try making a duck. Uh huh? Hmm. It doesn't look much like a duck, does it? Well, not really. But it was a good try, Mr. Root. Ah, let's face it. I really don't have the talent or the tools to trim as well as the mystery trimmer did. Hmm. Those clippers of yours didn't cut very well. The ends of these twigs are kind of ragged. Compare this one to one of the clippings made by the mystery trimmer. The mystery trimmer's clipping has a cut edge that's neat and tidy. Hey, you're right. Great Gardenius. It would take a sharp little tool to make a neat and tidy cut like that. A tool much smaller and sharper than clippers. Hmm, like scissors. Scissors. Hmm. Who do we know who uses small, sharp scissors in Busytown? Well, we have scissors at school, but they're not very sharp. They're made of plastic, so they wouldn't work. Who else uses sharp scissors in busy town? Hey, there's a truck with scissors on it. The Taylor's delivery truck. Right, a tailor uses scissors. Come on, let's go to the tailor shop to see if we can find more clues. See you later, Mr. Root. See ya. Bye. Bye, kids. Good luck solving the mystery. Goodness, no, I didn't trim any bushes. I only use my scissors to cut fabric to make clothes. Oh, well, thanks anyway, Mrs. Taylor. Now what, Heckle? I guess we'll just have to go back and look for another clue. Huh? <gasps> look at that! Bush clippings! Hey, where did those clippings come from? Maybe the mystery trimmer left them. Come on, team. Let's check them out. This trail came from the park. That means the mystery trimmer walked this way. The trail goes that way. Let's follow it. Come on. Uh, uh. Oh, boy. Whoa. Are you okay, Loli? Yep. Just uh, tripped over something. <laughs> it's a comb. Hey, this comb has bush clippings in it. That means it was used on the bushes. But a comb isn't a tool that a gardener would use. Who would use this? The mystery trimmer, that's who. Let's see. What do we know so far? The mystery trimmer knows what the heads of everyone in Busy Town look like. And we know the trimmer likes hair and is good at using scissors and a big comb. And we know the trimmer left a trail of bush clipping. So let's keep following that trail. to speed up before our clues get swept up by the sidewalk sweeper. Quicker! Follow the clippings! The trail leads this way. Watch out, everyone! Things got everywhere. And the trail stopped here. Hey, this is the barber shop. Maybe Mr. Barber can tell us if anyone came for a haircut with clippings stuck to their clothes. Good idea, Huckle. The barber is asleep and he's really snoring. Should we leave? Not till we know who's behind this mystery. <laughs> We should wake him. <laughs> hey, there are clippings stuck to his sweater. And there are a few clippings in his hair, too. See? There's a picture of Mr. Von Flugel. And Dr. Lion and Mr. Fumble, too. This is a barber who's very proud of his work. And a barber who knows a lot of heads in this town. Hello! 
I'm here for my trim. <laughs> oh, ah. What? <laughs> Need the scissors? Come, my electric razor. Uh, I've got a haircut to do. Hello, Mr. Barber. We were wondering, do you like trimming bushes as well as hair? <laughs> well, I did go to the park late last night to trim a few bushes for my friend, Mr. Root. It was you! I really need a trim to look my best for my patients today. I want to cut your hair, Dr. Lion, but I can't find my big comb. And your hair needs the big one. Is this what you're looking for? Ah, you found my big comb. Yep, you dropped it on the sidewalk. Mr. Barber is the mystery bush trimmer of Busy Town. Who made the part pretty? Goldbug here reporting live from the Busy Town Barber Shop. Tell me, Huckle, how did you solve the mystery? Well, Goldbug, here's how it happened. First, we discovered that the trimmer used sharp scissors instead of clippers. Then, we followed the trail of bush clippings to the barber shop. Mr. Barber knows all the heads in Busy Town. He is our mystery trimmer. Yes, folks, you heard it here first on Busy Town Action News. Huckle and his mystery-solving team have done it again. They found the mystery trimmer. Yay! Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one too. Hooray for Huckle! Hooray for us! Well, while I'm here, I might as well get a haircut, too. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Yeah, just a bit off the top. Trimmed exactly the way I like it. <laughs> <laughs> the missing museum statue mystery. Or maybe a famous sports team has come to town. Hi, Huckle. Hi, Big Will, Big Walt. Do you guys know what the excitement is all about? I don't know, Huckle. No, I don't know either. Well, whatever it is, I hope they're giving out free snacks. Mmm, free snacks. Busy Town Action Bug News! Goldbug here for Busy Town Action News, reporting live at the Busy Town Art Museum. In just a few moments, we will see a new work of art by Busy Town's most famous artist, Vincent Van Gogh. A new work of art? I wonder if it's a painting. No, it's not a painting, my dear. It's a sculpture. A sculpture? What's a sculpture? A sculpture is like a statue. Hey, I've seen pictures of you. You're Vincent Van Gogh, Busy Town's <gasps> most famous artist. At your service. Okay, everyone, get ready. Here it is, Vincent Van Gogh's latest and greatest sculpture. Oh. <gasps> My statue, it's gone. Oh. That's bad news. But the good news is we have Huckle and his mystery-solving pals on the scene. Well, what about it, Huckle? What do you think happened to the statue? I don't know, Goldbug. It looks like it just disappeared. And if you ask me, that's a mystery! So I'm gonna find out what happened to it and solve the missing museum statue mystery. Ready for it? Here it goes! for the latest updates about this missing statue mystery. Goldbug, act! Do you really 
think you can find out what happened to my statue? We can try. First, we need to know what we're looking for. What did the statue look like, Mr. Van Goot? Ah, <sighs> this is what it looks like. It's a yellow elephant. And it's big, even bigger than you. Bigger, and also much, much heavier. Hmm, that means it would have been very hard to move it. Yes, it took eight movers to get it into the window. I don't know how it could have got out. Well, that makes this mystery even more mysterious. I wish you luck. So, how are we going to find out what happened to a statue when we don't know anything about statues? Hmm. I just got a brainwave. What about Mr. Gronkle? Good idea. He's an art collector. His mansion is full of statues. So he might be able to help us figure out what happened to the statue. But Mr. Gronkle's the grumpiest guy in busy town. In that case, I vote that Huckle goes in first. All in favor, say yes. Yes! <laughs> Guess I'm going in first. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> Uncle, I'm... I know who you are. You're Huckle, and these are your mystery-solving friends. Well, have you solved the museum statue mystery yet? No, we're just getting started. We were hoping you could help us. Well, if you want to know about art and statues, I'm the person to see. You better come in, but don't break anything, and wipe your feet. Let's go to my backyard. <laughs> I have two Vincent Van Gogh statues in my art collection that you can see. <laughs> that statue looks like it's made of marshmallows. That's because it is made of marshmallows, young lady. That's what makes Vincent Van Gogh <gasps> statues so special. They're all made of food. Mm. It's the tastiest looking piece of art I've ever seen. Oh, I wonder if it tastes as good as it looks. No, you don't. That one looks like it's made of cheese. Yes, cheese, exactly. <sighs> now, what type of food was Vincent's missing statue made of, then? Mm hmm. We don't know, Mr. Gronkle. All we know is that it was an elephant. A yellow elephant. Maybe what it was made of has something to do with how it disappeared. It could be a clue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, ah. Mr. Gronkle. We're going to ask Mr. Van Goat what his statue is made of right away. Hey, no eating the art. We haven't had lunch. We're hungry. Is that one of Mr. Vincent Van Goat's statues too, Mr. Gronkle? It looks like it's melting. No, that's just a nice decoration for the table. Lunch! Uh -uh. Oh. See ya! Thank you! Yeah, thanks! Oh, sorry, Mr. Van Goat. We didn't mean to interrupt your lunch. Lunch? But I wasn't eating lunch. Isn't that mashed potatoes? It is mashed potatoes. But I wasn't eating them. I was making another statue out of them. I'll show you! Oh, mm, boy. All these statues look good enough to eat. Except for the broccoli and lima bean one. Yeah. <laughs> we need to ask you what kind of food your missing statue was made of. It could be a clue. Butter. It was made of butter. Oh, so that explains why it was a yellow elephant. Voila! My mashed potato masterpiece. It looks a little <gasps> bent. Oh, dear. Maybe mashed potatoes wasn't the best food to use. What about sticky rice? Sticky rice, of course. Ah, ah I had some just the other night. Okay, now we know the missing statue is made of butter. So what do we know about butter? It's yellow. It's slippery. And it's yummy melted on hot toast. <laughs> true, true, and true. So does that help us solve this mystery? No. no. Right. So we should go back to the Busy Town Museum and look for more clues. Let's go. Hey, look. There's
there's some kind of stain on the floor. Let's go get a closer look. Boy, I'm glad I'm not a statue. Those lights are really hot. I wonder what made that stain. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you look just like a modern art statue, Loli. What happened? Ooh, I slipped on that stain. It sure is slippery. <laughs> well, that's because it's a butter stain. Butter? Are you sure? Mm. Definitely butter. Yum, yum. Mm, buttery, yummy butter. Ew, gross. Don't worry, Sally. We washed our hands first. Hmm. So what do we know so far about this mystery? First, the statue is big and heavy and would be very hard to move. Second, it was made of butter, which is very slippery. <laughs> and very yummy melted on hot toast. Wait a minute. Butter? Melted? Hot lights? Aha! I think I got it! So, Huckle, what's the buzz in the busy town art world? Have you and your pals solved the mystery of the missing museum statue? Well, Goldbug, here's what I think happened. First, we found out that all of Mr. Van Goat's art is made of food and that the missing statue was made of butter. Then Loli slipped on the butter stain we found on the floor where the statue was. The lights were hot, so I think the lights melted the statue. Then where's all the melted butter? Yeah, wouldn't a big statue leave a bigger puddle of butter than this? They're right, Huckle. If the statue melted, where did all the rest of the melted butter go? Hmm. Look, I think I know where the melted butter went. It tripped through the crack in the floor. Let's find out. Butter! You are right! Hooray for Huckle! Everybody all together solve the mystery with Huckle. You can solve one, two. There you have it, folks. Another mystery solving masterpiece by Busy Town's most famous mystery solver, Huckle. Goldbug, out! From now on, I'll be much more careful about the food I use to make my statues. Oh, all these food statues are making us hungrier and hungrier. I knew that might happen, so I thought you might like this. Mashed potatoes! Let's just say I had lots of leftovers. <laughs> There's nothing like solving a mystery to build up an appetite. <laughs> Yeah, I'm okay. 
I guess I like jugglers too, but <laughs> not when I'm the one being juggled. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, please! You have to help me! What's wrong? My name is Belinda Bear. I'm a trapeze artist, and, well, it's my diamond tiara. A tiara? What's a tiara? A tiara is a small crown that girls wear on their heads. I wish I had a tiara. So do I. But didn't you say you had one? Yes. It was there last night when I went to bed, but when I got up this morning, it was gone. Hmm. There last night? Gone this morning? You know what I think? Mm hmm. I think we have a mystery to solve. Busy Town Action Bug News. Go bug here at the Busy Town Fairgrounds, where the big news is that Huckle is on to a new three-ringed mystery. Tell us about it, Huckle. Well, Goldbug, all I can say at this time is that Belinda Bear's tiara is missing. And I'm going to find out where it is and solve the mystery of the vanishing tiara. A tiara? A small crown that girls wear in their heads. Wow! That is big news! Ready for it? Here it goes! Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Everybody! Who, what, when, where, why, how? Solve a mystery! for important updates. Goldbug, out! The first thing we need to know, Belinda, is where your tiara was the last time you saw it. It was in my tent. I'll show you. This is my tent. Last night, I put my tiara in my jewelry box. Well, it's obviously not there now. I always wear my lucky tiara at every performance. Unless I get it back by showtime, I will not be able to do my trapeze act. Don't worry, we'll find it. Oh, thank you, Sally. Guess what, guys? Okay, <laughs> I guess your clothes are in the wash, so that's why you're wearing your long underwear. Not even close, Sally. These are our circus acrobat costumes. <laughs> I will now flip Pig Woat into the air. No, you won't, Pig Woat. I will flip you into the air. No, you won't. I will. Won't. Will. Won't. Will. Won't. I said will. How can they look exactly alike, but be so different? I think we should start at the lunch tent. Maybe someone saw something that will give us a clue. Will. Won't. Okay, let's find out if anyone saw anything strange. Look, there's Belinda. And she's wearing her tiara. Where was it? Where was what? The tiara. In the dressing table jewelry box where it always is. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go. Wait a minute. We saw the jewelry box. It was empty, wasn't it? Completely empty. Only now, she has it on her head. So I guess there's no mystery to solve after all. <laughs> Did I just hear right? There is no mystery? That's right, Goldbug. It turns out the missing tiara isn't missing after all. The buzz in busy town is no mystery. Goldbug, out. Hey, I smell hot buttered popcorn. Periscope, try to locate the popcorn. Bing, 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 bing. The popcorn has been located. Let's hurry up so we can eat it. Well, did you have any luck finding my tiara? What do you mean? We thought you found it. No, I didn't find it. I thought you said you were going to find it. Well, we did say that, but... Then please hurry. My show starts right after lunch. I have to go. I'm supposed to meet my sister, Maxine, for lunch in the food tent. I'm confused, Huckle. 
Why is Belinda asking us to find something she already found? And why is she going for lunch when we just saw her finish lunch? Beats me. But if Belinda is still looking for her tiara, I guess the mystery of the vanishing tiara isn't solved. The mystery is back on. Mystery on! <laughs> huh? <laughs> huh? How can one clown be carrying both ends of a ladder? Hmm. Maybe it's not one clown. Maybe it's two clowns that look exactly the same. That makes sense. They look the same, but they're as different as night and day. It's sort of like Pig Will and Pig Won't. They look exactly the same, but they're not the same. I flip you first. Okay, right after I flip you. <laughs> See what I mean? Oh. No, after I flip you. <laughs> hey. Why is Belinda going that way? The food tent is the other way. And look, she's wearing her tiara. Sorry, Goldbug. Belinda has her tiara again, so it looks like the mystery is off again. Ah. Now which way did she go? Oh, should I become a periscope again, Huckle? No, Loli. I've got a better idea. Excuse me. Can you see which way Belinda Bear went from way up there? She went that away. Thanks, partner. Now she's that away, and she's not wearing her tiara anymore. Mystery's on again. Hold it. Now she's over there, and she's got her tiara on again. Huh? Mystery's off. <sighs> Now I flipped you! There's Belinda with no tiara. Mystery on! Aha! Uh -huh. And there she is, with her tiara. Mystery off! Boy, Belinda sure gets around fast. It's like she's in two places at the same time. But that's impossible, Sally. Still. There must be some explanation for why she has her tiara on one moment, and then she doesn't have it on the next. And why she's here one second, and over there the next. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. <laughs> oh, looks like Huckle is busy using his mystery-solving brain. Aha! Hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. I think I know the answer to the mystery of the vanishing tiara. So let's hear it, Huckle. Well, Goldbug, here's what I think happened. First, we went to the lunch tent to look for clues, and we found Belinda wearing her missing tiara. Then we saw her again a minute later without it. We kept seeing her in different places with and without her tiara. Belinda said she has a sister, Maxine, right? Well, I bet Maxine is her twin sister. I bet Maxine and Belinda look exactly the same and that we've been seeing both of them all day. Twins? Of course! Just like Pig Will and Pig Won't. And the two clowns. <laughs> and they both wear the same costume, so... So then they would both have a diamond tiara. Right, Sally. And if Belinda kept her tiara in one jewelry box... Then Maxine would keep hers in the other jewelry box. Right again. So I bet if we look in Maxine's jewelry box, we'll find... A tiara! <gasps> Which means Maxine must have taken Belinda's tiara by mistake. Very good, guys. Let's go see. Okay, Sally. Open the other jewelry box and let's take a look. Belinda's tiara. You were right, Huckle. Maxine must have taken Belinda's tiara by mistake. Hooray for Huckle! Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one too. Belinda, Maxine! Look what we found in your jewelry box, Maxine. In my jewelry box? That means I must have taken Belinda's tiara by mistake. Whoops, sorry. 
sorry, Belinda. That's okay, Maxine. Everyone makes mistakes. <laughs> Hurry, Maxine. It's showtime. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the show. Oh, we will. We really will. Hey, wait a minute. Where's Loli? Oh, how do I get into these situations? <laughs> The Postage Stamp Mystery. Why, thank you, Sally. I decorated it myself. It's a special birthday card for my nephew in Workville. And off it goes. I'm mailing a letter to my grandpa, but it's just in a plain envelope. Oh, let's have a look at the stamp on it. Ah, oh, one of the new flower stamps. I didn't know you were interested in stamps, Mr. Frumble. Oh, yes, I have a large collection of butterfly stamps. Each one is like a tiny work of art. Cool! I like butterflies! Of course, my eyes aren't what they used to be, so I need help from my magnifying glass to see them. Today, I added a special butterfly stamp to my stamp collection. It's very beautiful! Wow! Can we see it? Yeah, can we? Yes! Come back to my house and have a look! Do you always keep your lawnmower in the living room, Mr. Frumble? Oh, dear, no. <laughs> I usually keep it in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see now. Ah, here it is. My beautiful butterfly stamp. Um, Mr. Frumble, this stamp has a picture of a flower on it. <gasps> You're right. It is a flower stamp. Well, what do you know? Without the magnifying glass, it looks just like my special butterfly stamp. But if your special butterfly stamp isn't in the album, where is it? It's probably just on the desk, somewhere. Here are some stamps. Oh, they have flowers on them, too. Then maybe the butterfly stamp is under something on the desk. Nope, nothing under this stuff. Hmm. It looks to me like we have a mystery to solve. Busy Town Action Bug News! Hmm? <laughs> ah, <laughs> I've been looking for that glove. Huh? Oh, Goldbug here reporting live for Busy Town Action News. What's this we hear about a mystery, Huckle? Mr. Frumble's butterfly stamp was here one moment and gone the next. But have no fear. We'll find it and solve the mystery of the missing stamp. Ready for it? Here it goes! Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Everybody! Who, what, when, where, why, how? Solve a mystery! Another baffling busy town mystery. Where did Mr. Frumble's butterfly stamp fly off to? Stay tuned for exciting news updates. I'm Goldbug, and that's the buzz in busy town. Mr. Frumble, what did you do before you went to mail the birthday card? Let's see. I sat at my desk and had a snack of crackers and milk. Then I put my new butterfly stamp in my stamp album. At least I thought I did. And then what? And then uh, I put a stamp on the birthday card envelope and uh, uh, went out to mail it. So you put one stamp in your album and one on the envelope. Mm hmm Did you use your magnifying glass to check the stamps first? No, I didn't think I needed to. Ah, uh -huh. I think I know what happened. Mr. 
Mr. Frumble said that without his magnifying glass, the flower stamp looked like the butterfly stamp. Hey, that's right. So maybe you put your special butterfly stamp on the birthday card envelope, thinking it was a flower stamp. Yeah, by mistake, because you didn't use your magnifying glass. That would explain why the flower stamp ended up in my stamp album. But how do I get my butterfly stamp back? Don't worry. If the stamp is on the birthday card you mailed, all we have to do is go to the mailbox and get the card back. Come on! Uh-oh! There's a postal worker! And she, she's taking all the mail from the mailbox! Wait! Oh, dear! My butterfly stamp! It must be in that mail truck now! Let's go after it, team! Pig will and pig won't. What are you doing here? We just heard all about the missing stamp mystery on Goldbug's Busy Town Action News Report. And I'm going to help solve the mystery. You? What about me? How can you help solve the mystery if I'm helping to solve it? Guys, no one's going to solve any mystery if we don't catch that mail truck. But you can both help by moving your sausage mobile. Whoops! Sorry! <laughs> I don't see the mail truck anymore. Looks like we lost it. <laughs> Maybe not. It just picked up mail to be delivered. So it must be headed to the post office. Exactly. Come on, team. To the post office. Oh, yes. The driver of the mail truck you're looking for dropped off her mail bag a little while ago. It's probably in our mail sorting department. Follow me. Thanks, Mr. Postmaster. Yikes. How will we ever find one little envelope in this big place? Can you tell me anything about the envelope you're looking for? Well, it's addressed to someone who lives in the town of Workville. Does that help? Sure does. Your envelope should be in the Workville mailbag by now. Ah, here it is. All the mail that's going to Workville is in this mailbag. That's still a lot of envelopes. And they all look alike, too. Wait, Mr. Frumble's envelope looks different. Remember? He decorated it. That's right. Bright yellow with pink and purple polka dots. Aha! Uh -huh. That shouldn't be hard to find. <laughs> Way to go, Loli. You got it. Oh, no. It's another flower stamp. <sighs> then Mr. Frumble didn't put the butterfly stamp on the birthday card envelope after all. Sorry, everyone. It looks like I guessed wrong, huh? That's okay, Huckle. It was a good idea. But if my butterfly stamp isn't on this envelope, where could it be? Good question, Mr. Frumble. Let's go back to your house and give your desk another look. Maybe we missed something. Now what? We've already checked everywhere for the butterfly stamp. I smell crackers. Me too. Yeah? Well, I smelled them first. Did not. Did too. Would you both like some crackers? Yes, please. Hmm. Pig won't. <laughs> you look like a letter ready to be mailed with those stamps stuck to you. <laughs> well, stamps are sticky, Loli, because they have glue on them. Hey, that gives me an idea. Maybe the butterfly stamp stuck to something on Mr. Frumble's desk. Hey, yeah. We checked under the things, not on them. <laughs> Yay! Hmm. Still no butterfly stamp. Hmm. It's not on this tin, either. Mm. Mr. Frumble? <clears throat> Could I please have some milk to wash down my cracker? Oh, oh, me too! <laughs> they are a bit dry, aren't they? Two glasses of milk coming up. Milk? Mr. Frumble, didn't you say you had milk with your crackers? Yes, that's right. Well, the cracker plate is still here. But where's the milk glass? Oh, I probably put it in the kitchen before I left for the mailbox. I always try to keep my house neat. Hmm? Hmm. The butterfly 
my stamp. I found it. So you did. Wonderful. Wow, it is a beautiful stamp. But how did you know to look for it on the milk glass, Huckle? Yes, Huckle. How did you know? Well, Goldbug, here's how we figured it out. First, we thought Mr. Frumble had put a stamp on a letter he was mailing. So we checked the post office, but the butterfly stamp wasn't there. Then we noticed the stamps that had stuck to Big Won't, so I guessed that the butterfly stamp might have stuck to something, too. We checked everything on Mr. Frumble's desk, but there was no stamp. Then I noticed the milk glass was missing, and that was the one place we didn't look. Mystery solved, thanks to Huckle. Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one, two. Hooray for Huckle! I couldn't have done it without my busy town buds. Yay! There you have it, folks. Another mystery solved by Huckle and his team. This is Goldbug signing off! Of course, this mystery would never have been solved without me. You? I gave Huckle the sticky stamp idea. But I gave him the missing milk glass idea. Yeah, but my idea helped the most. Nope, mine Here we go again. Sally, hi. Huckle, what you got there? A million dollars? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I do have eighteen dollars. Whoa, that's a lot of money. <laughs> yes, sirree. Thank you. What can I do for you today, Huckle? I've been saving up my allowance, and I've got eighteen dollars to put in my bank account. Eighteen dollars? That's a lot of money. It sure is. <laughs> Lowly? <laughs> I didn't see you there. That's because I'm the best hide and seeker in Busy Town. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> What's all that noise? Go, go, go! Go, go, go! <laughs> Over here. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the best team that we know? Busy Town Blazers! Go, go, go! Who's the team that leads the way? Busy Town Blazers! Hip, hip, hooray! Go, Busy Town! Hooray! Wow! That was fantastic! No, it wasn't. It was amazing! Is there a football game today? You bet there is. The Busy Town Blazers are in the semifinals. And Miss Honeybear and I have tickets. It starts at noon. I can't wait. Oh, now, don't be glum, chum. We'll tell you all about the game. Well, I'd better get going. I'll meet you at noon, Miss Honey. Bye. See you later, Bruno. I wish I could go to the game, too, but I've got to stay here and guard the bank. That's too bad. But you can always go to the next game. Boom! Hmm. 
This is interesting. What is it? It's part of a note, and it has something to do with Bruno. Really? It says, meet me at the bank at 12 o'clock sharp. That Bruno is in for the surprise of his life. Oh, goody! <laughs> I love surprises. It might not be a good surprise, you know. That's right. Sometimes surprises are bad surprises. Really bad surprises. Oh, I never thought of that. What kind of bad surprise could it be? I bet that note was written by bank robbers. They're going to come here at noon and rob the bank. That would be a surprise. <laughs> it sure would. Well, I don't think it was written by bank robbers. Well, then who wrote it? And what's the big surprise going to be? Well, I don't know. It's a mystery. And mysteries are what we like best, right, team? Right! Busy Town Action Bug News! Goldbug here at the Busy Town Bank. What's the buzz in Busy Town, Huckle? We're going to find out who wrote this note and solve the bank note mystery. Ready for it? Here goes! What's the surprise? Can Huckle and his team solve this mystery by noon today? You can bank on it. Go, Bug, out! We don't have much time if we're going to solve this mystery by 12 o'clock. Let's get started. Hey, this is just part of a bigger note. See? It's ripped. Maybe if we look around, we can find the rest of the note. Great idea, Loli. Let's spread out. This part of the note? Does it match? Yeah, it does. What does it say? It says, you bring the radio and... Radio? Like a walkie-talkie? Oh. Bank robbers always use walkie-talkies. <clears throat> it wasn't finished. It says, you bring the radio and I'll bring the root beer? Why would bank robbers need root beer? Because robbers are always thirsty. There's nothing worse than thirsty robbers. Oh, dear. I don't think this was written by robbers, but we have to find out who really did write it. And quick, what are our clues? Walkie-talkies, root beer, 12 o'clock. Right. Where can you buy walkie-talkies? Uh, the electronics store. Then we're off to the electronics store. Let's get busy town. Talkies today? No, I haven't. Aww. I've only had one customer today. A lady bear came in and bought a radio. A radio! Of course! The note said, bring a radio. Whoever wrote it probably didn't mean walkie talkies. They probably meant a radio. So if a lady bear bought a radio today, then one of the bank robbers is a lady bear who listens to music while she robs banks. I still don't think that bank robbers wrote the note. What about the root beer? Right. That's our second clue. Where can you buy root beer? In, In a, a grocery, grocery store. store. Then let's go to Dad's grocery store. Why, yes, kids. I, I sold a whole case of root beer just a few minutes ago. And a bunch of bananas. Oh, careful there. <laughs> Who bought them, Daddy? Bananas Gorilla. He sure does love his bananas and his root beer. Bananas is one of Bruno's best friends. And Bruno's other best friend is Miss Honeybear. Maybe she's the lady bear who bought the radio. Good thinking, Sally. That means Bruno's best friends are planning to rob the bank. That's terrible. No, it isn't. It's awful. Bananas may have written this note, but he and Miss Honeybear are no bank robbers. It's almost 12 o'clock. We'd better get back to the bank. <laughs>
Bruno sure looks worried. So we think we know who wrote the note. Bananas Gorilla. And who he wrote it to. Miss Honey Bear. But we still don't know what the surprise is. Hmm. What are our clues again? Radio, root beer, 12 o'clock. Why 12 o'clock? What happens then? Lunch. I'm hungry. Oh, and the football game. That's right. And Bananas and Miss Honey Bear have tickets to the game. Uh, I'm confused. If Bananas and Miss Honey are going to meet at the bank at 12 o'clock, then they're going to miss the football game. Not if they have a radio. I think I know what the surprise is going to be. Looks like Huckles had a brainwave and just in time, too. It's almost 12 o'clock. What's the scoop, Huckle? Well, go by, here's what I think happened. Once we found both parts of the note, we had three clues. First, we went to the electronics store to see who bought walkie-talkies. But we learned that a lady bear bought a radio. Then, Dad told us Bananas Gorilla bought root beer from his store. When we realized the football game started at noon, I figured out the surprise. I think Bananas and Miss Honey Bear aren't going to the football game after all. They don't want Bruno to miss the game, so the big surprise is that they're coming to the bank instead to listen to the game on the radio. It's 12 o'clock! Come on! Oh, it's 12 o'clock. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Here they come. Get ready, Bruno. <laughs> I hope you're right, Huckle. I thought you were going to the game. We didn't want to see the game without you, so we decided we could all listen to it together during your lunch hour instead. Pull up a chair and have a root beer, Bruno, old boy. It's game time. This is a surprise. A good surprise. I knew it would be a good surprise. No, you didn't. <laughs> you were right, Hucko. Mystery solved. Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one, two. Hooray for Huckle! I couldn't have done it without all your help. Thanks, guys. And the game is about to begin. Who's the best team that we know? Busy Town Blazers! Go, go, go! Who's the team that leads the way? Busy Town Blazers! Flying Saucer Mystery! Well, folks, that's the end of this Busy Town Action News Report. This is Goldbug, Busy Town's roving reporter, signing off. But before I go, let me tell you about a big, big story I'm working on. It has to do with Busy Town's well-known inventor, Mr. Fixit, and his amazing new invention. <gasps> Stay tuned for my new Busy Town Action News Report to find out. Whoa! I wonder what new invention Mr. Fixit is working on this time. Whatever it is, Loli, Goldbug's going to tell us all about it in his next news report. Sally's right. And until then, who wants to play some soccer? We do, Huckle! Light, like on an airplane. But it sure wasn't shaped like an airplane. It looked more like a... a... Fly 
flying saucer! Did you see it? The flying saucer? We're being invaded by aliens from outer space! Calm down, Pig Will and Pig Won't. I'm sure that flying object didn't really come from outer space. But if that wasn't a flying saucer from outer space, what was it? Good question, Loli. It sounds to me like we have... A big mystery to solve! Hmm, where's Goldbug in the busy town action bug news van? Yeah, Goldbug always shows up to report on busy town's mysteries. Maybe he didn't hear me. I said, we have a big mystery to solve! It looks like he's not coming. Don't worry, guys. I can take Goldbug's place. Oh, good idea, Sally. I can be your microphone. This is Sally filling in for that roving reporter, Goldbug. So, Huckle, what's this about a big mystery in Busy Town? Well, Sally, we just saw something that doesn't make sense. Something that looked like a flying saucer. We don't know what it is or where it's from, but we're going to find out and solve this strange flying saucer mystery. Ready for it? Here goes! to be an alien spaceship. Not if the pilot is a teensy tiny space alien. From a teensy tiny planet. Ah, someone is inside. Or something. Maybe we shouldn't open the door. Oh. Ah. <gasps> For space aliens. Now space monsters. That didn't sound like a space monster to me. <laughs> Mr. Fixit, are you okay? I think so. Except for this bump on my head. How did you get it? Well, I... That's odd. I can't remember how I got it. Then do you remember what you were doing here in Busy Town Park? I can't remember that either. Wait! I do seem to recall that saucer thingy zooming around me. Oh. The space aliens must have zapped Mr. Fixit with a space ray! And took away his memory! A space ray doesn't explain how Mr. Fixit got a bump on his head, guys. I think we need more clues. Hey, what about this, Huckle? Hmm. This red plastic reminds me of something. Aha! The broken red light on the flying saucer! See? It's a perfect fit! So, that piece of red plastic must have fallen off the flying saucer. When it hit something near here. But what? Uh, not what, 
Sally? Who? I'm guessing the flying saucer hit Mr. Fix-It, gave him the bump on his head, and made him lose his memory. Good one, Huckle. Now we know what happened to Mr. Fix-It. But we still don't know where the flying saucer came from. We need to look for more clues. Guys, isn't that Mr. Fix-It's van? Yep, that's his. Hey, it is. That must be how you got here. Probably, but I don't remember. Let's check it out, team. Hello, Sergeant Murphy. Are you giving Mr. Fix-It a ticket? I'm afraid so, Huckle. He didn't put enough money in this parking meter. Hmm. Mr. Fix-It's van is missing the red plastic cover on one of its taillights. And I've noticed there's a hubcap missing from both sides of the van. That's weird. Why would Mr. Fix-It's van be missing a red plastic taillight cover and two hubcaps? Hmm. Hey, I think I know. Look, this saucer is made from the two hubcaps and the red plastic light cover missing from Mr. Fix-It's van. But why would space aliens make their flying saucer out of parts from Mr. Fix-It's van? Well, I don't think space aliens made this flying saucer pig, won't. My guess is Mr. Fix-It made it. He's an inventor, remember? That's right. I am an inventor, and I did make this flying saucer. Hey, my memory's starting to come back. That's great. Can you remember what's inside your flying saucer? It makes thumping noises sometimes. Sorry, but I don't remember. Well, I hope you remember to put enough money in the parking meter next time. Sergeant Murphy, are you giving Mr. Fix-It another parking ticket? <laughs> oh, no. I'm giving it to the other van parked here. Where? Uh, what other van? <gasps> this little van parked under here. That's Goldbug's Busy Town Action News Van. What's it doing there? Maybe Goldbug came to the park with Mr. Fix-It. Yes, that sounds familiar. But I can't remember what we were doing or where he went. Goldbug said he was working on a big story about Mr. Fix-It's amazing new invention. And if this flying saucer is that new invention, I think I know where we might find Goldbug. Ah! Ah! Run for your life! Space aliens! Goldbug? So that's why he didn't show up to report on our mystery. Yup. He was working on a big story about Mr. Fix-It's new invention, and he got trapped inside it. And now that I'm out of there, I've got a job to do. <laughs> this is Goldbug, reporting live from Busytown Park, where Huckle and his team have just solved the big flying saucer mystery. How did you do it, Huckle? Well, Goldbug, here's what happened. First, we followed the flying saucer to the park. Then we found Mr. Fix-It with a bump on his head and his memory gone. We noticed there were two hubcaps missing from Mr. Fix-It's van, as well as his taillight cover. That's what the flying saucer was made of. Finally, when Sergeant Murphy found your news van, I remembered that you were covering the story of Mr. Fix-It's latest invention. And this flying saucer must be it. And you must be inside. Luckily, Huckle followed the flying saucer back here and solved the mystery. Everybody, all together, solve the mystery with Huckle. You can solve one, two. Hooray for Huckle! That's the story, folks. Flying Saucer takes roving reporter on wild ride, kids to the rescue. This is Goldbug signing off. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Fix-It. Let's get you to a doctor so they can have a look at that bump on your head. And then I'll figure out what went wrong with my flying saucer. I knew that flying saucer wasn't really from outer space. Yeah, everyone knows that flying saucers and space aliens aren't real. Are they? I don't think so. But just in case, I'll go.